The roll starts and I take a collar tie on Simon, but Simon circles in his own collar tie. I try to block it, but I'm unable to. So I just secure a collar tie with my other arm, so we're at least equal with our grips. This is what I was trying to do, block him from getting on the inside. The battle happening right now is both of us working to get our arms on the inside, inside position. We have the same grips on each other, we're 50-50, but what would be ideal for me is inside position with both my arms. It's going to be hard for either of us to get offense going with equal grips on each other. Simon tries to take a shot, but it's kind of pointless with my collar tie in the way, other than using it as a feint to get a reaction. I let Simon take an underhook. I'm giving him a little bit, but I'm not giving him too much. As I position my head as a frame, which really nullifies his underhook, it's head position. And when I'm ready, I take my head out of position defensively, so I can transition to offense in the form of a hip throw. As we land on the mat, my priority is to keep Simon on his back, which I accomplish by using my shin on his belly and my right arm ready to pull up on his left arm in case he tries to rotate towards me. With position and control secured, now I'm ready to transition to mount. Simon flares his elbows out way too much. He should be keeping them tight to his body as open elbows give me access to an underhook or even double underhooks if I want them. But at the time of this role, I had posted a YouTube short teaching the Nogi Ezekiel, and I had so many people comment that it's a trash submission. So despite them, I was going on a Nogi Ezekiel spree. To set up the Nogi Ezekiel, I need a good choke bite, so I lift up on his head and wiggle my hand to get my arm deeper on his neck. The same thing I do for arm triangles. Now I get really low to better position my pressure on his neck rather than his chin as this positions the pivot point of my arm as close to his neck as possible. This is where people mess it up with both the arm triangle and no gi Ezekiel's. They don't lower their position enough to put pressure on the neck. They stay high and put pressure on the chin. The pressure has to go somewhere and you need to be aware of where it's going. Now I use my head to push his head to make more space for my hand to enter. He tries to roll me into my guard. Initially, I resist, but then just let it happen. As that's another thing that people mentioned on my YouTube short, <laughs> that they can just roll you over. But if you have it deep, you can finish on the bottom just fine. If I didn't feel like I had it perfect, I would prioritize staying in top position in case it failed. Because if I had to switch to something else, I'd much rather be on top in mount. Nogi Ezekiel's are also something that you can do inside close guard. This one I had to use my strain face, as I couldn't get my hand in there deep enough to make it lower effort. I know that hitting a Nogi Ezekiel on a white belt does not prove them wrong, but I've been hitting this on all levels of belts, including black belts. It's a great submission if you know how to set it up. To train as much as I do, it's important to get adequate amounts of protein and nutrients in me but that can be difficult to do through diet alone, which is why supplements can be so beneficial and why I use Transparent Labs to fuel my training. With Transparent Labs, you know exactly what you're putting into your body. No artificial flavors, colors, or fillers. Use code JORDAN for 10% off your order or click the link in the description or pinned to comment. We start again and I have both a collar tie and a bicep tie, inside ties with both arms, which are very dominant grips for me. However, I shoot pretty horribly for a fireman's throw, and Simon snatches up my neck. But he sits down right away, which makes it much easier for me to clear his legs. Since I'm past the guard and with the threat of the Von Flu choke, Simon wisely lets go. This is the Von Flu, and what I would have went for if Simon didn't let go. Simon should have walked himself to his left before sitting down. That way he could position his right hip on the mat, instead of his hips facing up as it's much harder for his legs to catch me with his hips facing up. Watch how here I don't sit down right away. I take a step to my left first and sit my right hip onto the mat. This makes it much easier for me to catch him with my legs. And this is what Simon could have done to capitalize on my mistake, or he could have tried a standing guillotine, especially because he's taller than me. This could have been a great option. Anyways, he's framing well on me, keeping his distance to prevent me from controlling his head. With this hand on my shoulder, I quickly pop it off, and I think about a Kimura, but instead take an underhook. I'm in position for a far side armbar. This is a far side armbar, and what I had available. <laughs> but I try to refrain from armbars on YouTube <laughs> because I do them a lot, so instead, I go for a rolling front headlock, but I abandon that and instead let him turtle, so I can time it and step around him as he does. I'm waiting for him to move, and as he does, I roll through for a rolling back attack. But instead of going all the way to the back, I just enter the truck. Simon should be hiding his arm from me, 
as it's what I need to hit the twister. Once I have it, I connect my hands and it's a done deal. We start again, and I take an underhook as well as proper head position. I am at slight risk of Simon attempting an uchimata or a hip throw because my left foot is positioned behind him, but my head position should keep me safe as it keeps him away from my hips. Because Simon is stationary, I know it's going to be hard to hit a hip throw as it's much easier to perform with your opponent driving into you. But I attempt it anyways without fully committing and attack in the opposite direction as he corrects his position. As we land, I again use my head to control Simon and drive my weight into his right leg to keep his legs facing away from me. I don't want him to rotate and put his right hip on the mat as he could then regard with a guard such as half guard. I keep driving with my head and body weight to pin Simon on his back. Simon secures my ankle to put me in quarter guard, but this position is also three quarter mount for me. Often I'll attack the rolling back attack from here, but I switch it up and instead knee slide with the knee that's not stuck in his guard. Is there a name for this and what should be the name if there's not one? As I complete the pass, I prioritize staying tight on his hips and staying in front of his left knee. I use Simon framing against my leg to my advantage as I position that arm between my legs. Because I already have the underhook on Simon's right side, it's the logical place to attack. As I'm already under his elbow, as Simon tries to free himself of my underhook, he basically gives me his arm. The main submission options from here are the Americana, Straight Arm Lock, and Kimura, and I'm attacking based off his reaction. He straightens his arm to defend the Americana, so I go for the Straight Arm Lock. To finish, I position my forearm as a fulcrum underneath his elbow. You can hit these from all sorts of positions. It's a good way to go path the least resistance, as it's often easier to attack based off what you're given, rather than only looking to take what you want. I've been running out of students to roll with for YouTube, so if you live close, come stop by the gym. Whether you're white belt or black belt, whatever it is, even if you want to come and try to beat that guy on YouTube, 